As the trade and technology war between China and the U.S. intensifies, Chinese attitudes toward American products are changing. Huawei, as a representative brand of domestic electronic products, has naturally received significant attention. After the U.S. government imposed sanctions on Huawei, the company faced the predicament of lacking chips and Android operating system authorization, rapidly falling from its global top position and fading from prominence. However, after years of perseverance, Huawei released its Harmony OS operating system and introduced mobile chips like Kirin 9010 and 9020, returning to the smartphone market. With strong product innovation and robust 5G technology accumulation, Huawei quickly reclaimed the top spot in Chinese smartphone market sales, surpassing competitors like Apple. Unlike other Chinese brands such as Xiaomi, Honor, Vivo, and Oppo, which focus on mid to low end markets, Huawei, like Apple, targets the high end segment. Its product prices exceed those of average smartphones with flagship models even surpassing Apple. This has drawn sarcasm from some domestic netizens, who mock Huawei for not cheating poor people's money, implying that Huawei's chip performance lags behind Apple and Qualcomm, and its Harmony OS ecosystem is inferior to Android, yet it still pursues a premium strategy. Nevertheless, market data does not lie. Huawei uses overall product innovation to compensate for its lagging chip manufacturing process and absolute computing power disadvantages compared to competitors. In fact, except for a small number of gaming enthusiasts and tech geeks, most smartphone users do not care about manufacturing processes or absolute performance. They focus more on basic functions and daily usage smoothness. From this perspective, Huawei's products have consistently performed well. As a middle-income consumer, I have long used both an Apple and a Huawei phone. However, since I rely on computers far more than phones, my experience may not be fully representative. In my usage scenarios, Huawei phones already meet my needs effectively. In contrast, Apple's lack of innovation has made it difficult for me to feel motivated to upgrade. Early iPhones led in hardware parameters like cameras and screens, offering excellent experiences in photography and gaming. New releases always provided noticeable improvements with upgrades. Now, the iPhone's advantage is limited to relying on the prosperity of the iOS ecosystem. Indeed, Apple has not made significant technological innovations for a long time, whether in phones, tablets, watches, or PCs, leaving many users with aesthetic fatigue. Without Apple's ecosystem advantage, they might have abandoned Apple products long ago. This cannot entirely be blamed on Apple, as its performance in markets outside China remains strong. However, Chinese users are accustomed to intense product innovation and have low tolerance for electronic products that lack innovation. Moreover, China's hardware ecosystem is highly prosperous, with specific products for most niche functions, offering experiences far beyond what phones can provide, even iPhones. For example, many enjoy using phones for casual photography, treating iPhones as vlog cameras, which are more convenient than traditional cameras. However, after using DJI's Pocket Series, one realizes that even the highest-end iPhone cannot compete with DJI's products. In the eyes of sports enthusiasts, niche market cameras from companies like DJI and Insta360 are far beyond what iPhones can replace. Due to the dominant position of Chinese companies like ByteDance and Tencent in the domestic app market, as long as these companies' products adapt to Huawei phones, Apple's ecosystem advantage is further weakened. For instance, when Tencent and Apple clashed over revenue sharing, most Chinese users clearly stated that, if forced to choose, they would pick WeChat over Apple phones. ByteDance Douyin and CapCut dominate the entire ecosystem chain, from content creation to publishing and operations. Even in gaming, since most popular mobile games are domestic, Chinese phones can deliver excellent experiences. 
This significantly diminishes the value of Apple's ecosystem. In other words, the influence of Chinese tech companies is a fundamental reason why Apple cannot monopolize the Chinese market. Losing to Xiaomi and Vivo can be explained by Apple's higher pricing. But losing to Huawei is a clear defeat at the same consumer level. Of course, the impact of government support and grassroots nationalism cannot be ignored. Honestly, when Harmony OS abandoned Android support, many basic apps were not yet adapted, and the system experience was suboptimal, affecting Huawei's reputation. However, Government officials repeatedly urged domestic software vendors not to discriminate against local operating systems, and the public frequently pressured IT companies like Tencent, ByteDance, and Alibaba. Combined with Huawei's strong R&D capabilities, recent months of intensive updates have left users like me highly satisfied. While there is still a gap compared to iPhone and iOS, the experience is very close and far superior to Android. Personally, I will never buy another Android phone. We note that Microsoft's operating system authorization for Huawei has expired without renewal. So Huawei will only release PCs based on its self-developed chips and Harmony OS in the future. I am very excited about this and have tested some open Harmony products on the market, which are fully capable of handling daily office tasks. I believe that with the release of Huawei's self-developed PC chips, and Harmony OS next. Another Huawei wave will sweep the PC market. However, I understand that Harmony OS PCs are priced high, so I purchased an M4 chip Mac Mini for now. I hope Huawei's PCs can reach the performance level of Apple's M1, which would be sufficient. Let us wait and see what kind of results Huawei delivers in the coming months.